All right, so this video is really just to help us practice with orbital motion. So we saw in class that if you take universal gravitational laws, so take big G, a mass of a planet, mass of the satellite around it, divided by the distance between them squared, that's going to be equal to our centripetal force, which is uh, mass of the satellite times velocity squared over r. And this is, you know, for uh, having a planet right here and a satellite right here, um, and that satellite going around the planet in a circle. So that's saying that gravity is our centripetal force. We saw that you could take away one of the radii or one of the distances between it because it cancels. You can also take away the mass of the satellite, so the mass of the satellite doesn't really matter. So we're left with an orbital motion equation that says that V squared is equal to big G, mass of the planet, divided by the distance uh, between the planet and the orbiting satellite. So I'm, I'm saying mass of planet here because it doesn't just have to be the Earth. It could be any planet that you wanted to uh, or wanted to have or just a hypothetical planet. So let's say we have a hypothetical planet. Maybe it's this uh, planet that's back over here on this slide. Okay, so maybe the mass of our planet would be, I don't even have, I don't have no space right there. Okay, so mass of the planet would be 12 times 10 to the 24th kilograms. It's just a hypothetical planet. Okay, it's about, <clears throat> what, almost three times, uh, no, nah, twice, twice as massive as planet Earth. And then let's say that the distance between the uh, center of the planet and the satellite is 9 times 10 to the 8 meters. <clears throat> Anytime that you uh, are not having to solve for one of these, it's going to be given to you in a problem, just like it is now. So uh, you don't have to worry about memorizing masses of planets or anything like that. So the question is, uh, how fast? How fast is the satellite moving as it's going around the planet? So how fast is this satellite moving this way? That's our question that we want to know. Well, we know uh, with this equation that we have to square root both sides in order for us to get uh, a velocity out of this. So if we put everything together, that'll be the velocity is equal to the square root of big G, which we know is 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11th. And there's a unit there, but we know that unit's there just to make sure that everything works out right. Multiplied by the mass of the planet, 12 times 10 to the 24th kilograms. All right, and we divide it all by... 9 times 10 to the 8, and then you square root it. This is in meters, okay? And uh, you can uh, do this yourself, but I would suggest that you do it yourself. Uh, do it yourself, so you can make sure you practice putting it into the calculator. But you should get 943 meters per second. So it's a little bit uh, <clears throat> lower than some of the things that we calculated in class. Uh, so that's 943 meters per second. The planet is, is more massive, but you are uh, further away, and <coughs> uh, that square root helps out with that speed. So 943 meters per second. So what if, let's just say, what if <coughs> this planet um, were twice as far away from the satellite? So let's say here's our planet. The original position for the satellite was right here, and then we're going to say, oh, we're going to go twice as far out and put another satellite right there. <clears throat> so twice as far out. So if that is r, that would be another r, so that it is 2r out. Well, we could go through and go through and calculate, uh, recalculate this by just multiplying r by 2, and then uh, sticking everything back in the calculator and getting an answer for it. We could do that. Or we could take a look at the fact that all we're doing is changing an r. So if v is equal to the square root of g times the mass of the planet divided by r, and what we're doing is just multiplying that r by 2, then how is this any different, or how is this different from what we originally had? Well, the only difference is what's in green, and that is that square root of 2. So if we could separate that out, the difference from what we originally had, we might be able to uh, look at this problem a little bit easier. So if we can take that 2 out of our equation, and it would look like this if we did it, we would have uh, 1 over the square root of 2, when you bring it out, multiplied by g, the mass of the planet, and r, all under the square root. So this is actually something that we've already calculated. We just calculated that in the previous problem, and that turned out to be 943 meters per second. So here, all we really have to do is say 943 meters per second divided by the square root of 2, 
and that gives us 667 meters per second. <clears throat> so we noticed what we did there. We All we did was looked at what we changed in our equation. That the change was just the square root of 2. And we realized that everything else remained the same, and we had already calculated that. So by calculating all of that stuff, we know that all we have to do is take care of the change, which is this square root, or 1 divided by the square root of 2. And that square root of 2 is on the bottom because radius is on the bottom. So <clears throat> hypothetically, what if we uh, did the same thing, but we multiplied the mass by, of the planet by 3? Okay, so now we have a 3 uh, times the mass of the planet. So v is equal to the square root of big G, now times 3, the mass of the planet, divided by the separation between the original satellite <coughs> and the planet. So again, let's take that, that change out. So we have v is equal to, now we have the square root of 3, multiplied by our original g m p divided by r. Again, we've already calculated this. This is 943. So all we really have to do is say v is equal to the square root of 3 times 943. And that ends up being 1,633 meters per second. So we didn't have to recalculate anything. All we really had to do was just focus on how the equation changed. And it changed by just focusing on that square root of 3 that shows up in the equation. Okay, this is a way that we can analyze the problems so that we don't just blindly start calculating, especially if we've already calculated something. Or, possibly, what, uh, what if we aren't given any numbers and they just say, hey, the, multi uh, the mass multiplied by 2 or multiplied by 6, how would this change the velocity? Well, it shows up as a square root of that number in front of it if you change the mass. If you change the radius or the distance between them, then it shows up as a square root underneath of the original one. All right, well, this was for calculating velocity, so what if we calculate a mass? And we did this in class with the Earth, but what if we do it some, someplace else, like, say, Jupiter? Okay, Jupiter's got a lot of moons. It's got 60-some-odd moons. We're going to focus on one of them. Okay, one of the, those moons is named Io. Pretty interesting uh, little moon, very volcanically active. Um, but it is a distance of... 421,700 kilometers away from the center of Jupiter, okay? And we know that it makes its orbit around Jupiter once every 42 and a half hours. 42 and a half hours. So it's traveling pretty fast, but Jupiter is also very, very massive, so it has to do that fast in order to keep in orbit. So we know that we can uh, find the velocity of Io by simply doing the circumference divided by the time. 42.5 hours multiplying that by um, 3,600. Well, let's do this. 60 minutes and 60 seconds, which is 3,600, leaves us with a uh, time of 153,000 seconds. Okay. The circumference is 2 pi r, right, 2 pi r divided by that time, and this time right here, and I would, uh, I'm running out of time here, so I want you to verify that this is correct, but we have a velocity of 17,320 meters per second for Io. Okay, 17,320 meters per second is the velocity. So the question is, what is the mass of Jupiter, the mass of Jupiter? Well, if v squared is equal to big G times the mass of Jupiter divided by the distance between Jupiter and Io, then we rearrange this to find the Jupiter, mass of Jupiter, and that would be v squared times r divided by g. And putting all that in, we would have 17,320 meters per second squared times 421,700 meters, so we have to add three more zeros on there, that's that distance, and then dividing it by big G, 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11. Okay, you put all of that in your calculator, you would get a mass of Jupiter, I'm going to do this in a different color, mass of Jupiter of 1.8966 times 10 to the 27 kilograms 
which, if you look up what the actual answer is, is with an about 0.11% error. So we did very well on this one and found a, a very good number that matches with the number that is currently accepted. So this is using orbital motion to calculate the mass of something that it's orbiting around or knowing the mass, figuring out how uh, fast something needs to orbit to orbit at a particular distance. Okay.